folks. It's the Creepy Kentucky in here with you from deadpit.com, the innovators of Horror Talk Radio. We're the ballers and shot callers since 2005. How many of you people, how many in the horror community has been here that damn long? I want to know. Even the YouTube community. We were doing videos back in 2006. Anyway, check out our stuff deadpit.com at deadpit wherever you want to go or into the dead pits it's deadpit on patreon.com as well enough of the shilling i've got a big lot of stuff to talk about that i've got throughout the month february 2021 and i thought i would go through it first one up is a product of the late 80s. They do not make movies like this anymore. I didn't have this even on DVD. I had never purchased this movie. So I got it for dirt cheap and a lot online on Mercari. It is Weekend at Bernie's. This is a fun movie. It's kind of stupid, to be honest with you. Andrew McCarthy and Jonathan Silverman. And then, of course, Terry Kaiser is Bernie, who... I think he was recently doing some conventions. A buddy of mine had met him. Uh, they had like a Bernie backdrop for photo ops and stuff like that too. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's a fun movie. If you don't know what Weekend at Bernie's is, come on now. Um, yeah, definitely a product of the 80s. They do not make movies like this any longer. Next one up, I also purchased from Mercari. Believe it or not, it was actually in the same lot of movies Weekend at Bernie's was in. This is another one, very 80s. Uh, it's a double feature. I had not had the first film on Blu-ray. I did have the second one. So I think myself and Garrett are gonna work out some sort of trade for the second movie. He, he wants that one. I'm gonna hang on to this double feature. It takes up less shelf space. Big Steve Gutenberg fan. If, if you don't know, your ass better call somebody because he was in one of my all-time favorites. Oh, Taylor, it's me. Uh, Short Circuit. Um, again, robots in the 80s. Very 80s. The Johnny Five robot I loved when I was little. Um, and like I said, I did not own the first film on Blu-ray. I'm not really sure how good it looks. Um, but yeah, I picked this one up for RLJ Entertainment. They actually brought this one out dirt cheap again. It wasn't very much, um, but from what I understand, I got a good deal on this one because this one goes for pretty decent money online. Last one up that's not really horror that much, and the rest of these are pretty straight on horror films. Um, this one was one that is getting ready to go out of print, and it's one of my all-time favorite films. Good friend of mine, Garrett, actually purchased it as well, and I think he talked about it in his recent video. Um, the Heavenly Kid, Jason Gedrick, who a lot of you guys may know from Iron Eagle. This was right around the same time frame. This was 1985. Um, again, I think it may be an 80s cult classic that never was to, you know, it never was the classic that it should have been. Um, the Lewis Smith plays his father, who comes back as almost like a guardian angel to make him the cool kid in school and things don't turn out the way he originally expected. We'll just say that. Great soundtrack on this one. I actually own the soundtrack to this movie on vinyl. Um, the theme song to this, great. Love this movie. The DVD looked like horse shit. So I was ready to upgrade and I have not checked the transfer out on this movie, but this is probably one of my favorite underrated 80s teen, you know, one of those type of movies. Um, so yeah, The Heavenly Kid, if you can find it, um, I would pick it up because it was limited to 1,000 copies from Scorpion releasing and odds are it's never going to come back out again. This is not that well known of a movie. So it's a great movie though. I actually always really enjoyed this film. The Heavenly Kid. I picked up a couple of movies recently that were on clearance at Walmart. First one I wanted to mention on here with Janelle Monae. Um, I haven't heard a whole lot about this one. It's Antebellum. This is one of those movies that came out theatrically when nobody was going to the movie theaters at all. I don't think there's that many people going now. 
Um, so this is one of the rare theatrical 2020 horror films. Um, so I check is like six, uh, six ninety seven. I think all of these were six ninety seven at Walmart. So I grabbed it. I am going to check it out at some point in the near future. This one, I was kind of bullied into checking this one out. Um, Garrett and Uncle Bill both were really masturbating quite a bit over this movie. So, um, Walmart had it for like, I think it was like $11 or something. And it is the 19, what year was this? 1994 TV miniseries for The Stand, which Mick Garris actually directed. Um, we interviewed him about this movie back probably 15, well, not 15 years ago, but probably 10, 11 years ago when we had him on the show. Um, I remember not really being that big of a fan of this movie, but they say that they've done a great job with the transfer on this thing. So um, at least it's going to look really good. Paramount brought this one out not too long ago. I will check it out again at some point. It's a little bit too close to home for me right now, though with everything that's going on uh, with the pandemic. So, yeah, I think this one's, like I said, I think it's like $10, $11 right now on uh, Walmart.com and Walmart both have it. So I picked it up. Some more Walmart stuff. This one was $6.98. Color Out of Space, which is uh, Richard Stanley, crazy fucking filmmaker. Um, we've seen a lot of his stuff. Nicolas Cage, not a biggest fan, but we did review Mandy recently. So I figured I would check out the other blue and purple film from Nicolas Cage. Richard Stanley, I will say this about his movies, they are very, very hypnotic. So it almost feels like you're smoking a joint even when you're not, when you're watching some of these movies. So Hardware, I would say, is my favorite of his. Um, but yeah, I, I will check this one out at some points in the near future. This one was six ninety seven. If it was any more than that, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. The last one that I got at Walmart, which was kind of, um, I kind of got talked into this as well, because I, at one point in time, believe it or not, I was a big fan of Adam Sandler's movies. And then I think it started with like Mr. Deeds, when he started making shit like that, I just checked out and I haven't really been back. But evidently, I've heard that he does a great job in Uncut Gems. Um, I don't know a whole lot about this, but I have heard good things. And A24 Studios, they do good stuff typically. So I will uh, review this and get back with you guys soon on it. I have heard that Adam Sandler does an amazing job in this, and it's a completely different sort of role than he normally takes on. Screen Factory recently had a pretty big sale, and I got in on some of that stuff, and I got some other stuff. A good friend of mine, Corey, from S'mores Indoors Podcast, had a little bit of a sale on the DeadPit.com fans Facebook page, and I picked up some stuff from him as well. So I want to go over that, um, some of the stuff that I got from Corey real quick, and then we'll go right into the Screen Factory stuff. So this one, this one's still sealed, or it was, I opened it, um, 976 Evil, which for decades was the only movie that Robert Englund directed. And it's from the late 80s, Stephen Jeffries is in it. Um, it's not the best, but I actually always kind of enjoyed the movie. I wanted to upgrade the DVD and it's out of print now. And it's one of those deals where I don't even remember when this came out on Blu-ray. I had no recollection. It's one of those films that I'd searched for on eBay and was in shock that it was actually out on DVD or on Blu-ray. So this one, it looks like it came out in 2017 and uh, Columbia Pictures brought this one out, and they have like a retro VHS looking deal there with with the slip cover, which I hear is not not that easy to find as well. Anyway, nine seven six evil. This is one I'm saving for uh, October, and I want to check it out then. But yeah, I always really kind of enjoyed this movie. It's kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. Next film I got up was from Corey as well, Brandon Cronenberg, The Possessor. 
This one was on a lot of people's best of lists from 2020. It's kind of sci-fi horror. So I'm not big into that sort of thing, but at the same time, I'm willing to check it out if enough people enjoyed it. David Cronenberg's son, again, uh, it's supposed to be just a crazy visual type movie. It is the R-rated version of the film. There is a unrated cut as well, but I got a good deal on this, so I figured I would check it out, and if I like it, I may check out the unrated 4K. Possessor, baby! Possessor! I think almost all the rest of this stuff is Scream Factory. Before I get into it, I have a love-hate relationship with Scream Factory. They recently came out with some limited editions on Blu-ray of uh, Twice Dead and From Within and From Within 2 or something like that. Some of these movies that aren't as sought after, but 1,000 piece a limited edition, but you can buy five of them, folks. You could buy five of them. To me, it was designed for scalpers. I really detest Screen Factory as a company. They've done so many fucking bullshit things over the years. I'm just not a fan. I'm a fan of their product. I'm not a fan of the way they do business. Screen Factory, though, they do a great job at releases, extras, they employ our good buddy Michael Felcher, the biggest fan I know of the classic 80s slasher Berserker, by the way. We didn't know that, that he was a Berserker super fan until recently. But anyway, Scream Factory, I do not like their business model, how they do business, but they do a great job on their releases. I've been behind on Scream Factory stuff for quite a while. So they had a sale as well, and um, I just caught up with some stuff that I hadn't purchased. So last thing I got from Corey, this was another one that I do not remember was on Blu-ray at all. I think I was talking to Garrett about this. I was like, bad dreams, man. Why don't they, nobody has come out with that. And he was like, yeah, it was on a double feature. I was like, what, really? So yeah, they did a double feature of bad dreams and visiting hours. Um, it's kind of a weird, I don't understand the, the pairing of these two movies, but, um, it's been a while since I've seen Bad Dreams. Richard, um, Lynch, the, I think he's the bad guy in Bad Dreams. We met him one time and had a really great experience with a drunk Richard Lynch back in the day. Um, <laughs> which we may talk about that at, at some point on a future show. Uh, the late, great Richard Lynch, by the way, but, uh, Bad Dreams is almost like a Nightmare on Elm Street ripoff, but at the same time, it's fun. And um, Jennifer Rubin is a really good lady, too. We have talked to her before, so I picked that up. The double feature that I got, it just sounded like something that I would really enjoy. I did pick, I think all the rest of these I picked up directly from Scream Factory. This one is The Outing and The Godsend. The Godsend is like a um, creepy killer kid movie. The outing is, I think it's a weird take on a slasher with a genie or something like that. I don't think I've seen either one of these, but this was cheap enough for me to just grab it. Fuck it, you know. Another one that I had seen back when it first aired on USA Network, always really liked the movie. Um, I always felt it's kind of underrated, and I want to check it out again. Cherry Falls, it was, I think it was attached for years by this uh, other movie called Terror Tract. The DVD of this was a double feature of Terror Tract and Cherry Falls. The movies also debuted the same night on USA Network. So I don't know what the deal was, but I'm glad that they separated the two because Cherry Falls is by far the best um, of uh, you know the two. But you've got Jay Moore in this. Um, the Jeffrey Wright is in this. And, of course, Brittany Murphy. Uh, Michael Bean is brief. I think he's the sheriff in this or something. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen this. But um, it's, a, it's a pretty good, just regular edition. They had it for a good price. So I grabbed that. One that I had been waiting on for a while. I don't know why. I think the big reason I didn't buy this before is I would rather have all these movies together. Um, and it looks like... That's not going to happen anytime soon. So 
I picked this one up. It was like $8. This movie keeps going down and down in price. But um, Slumber Party Massacre, it's just a regular edition. Um, I really would love to see a box set of the Slumber Party Massacre and Sorority House Massacre films all in one set. Because they're not the best movies. But if you put them all together, it makes it worth it to me. So, Driller Killer, all that good stuff. Not one of my favorites, but yeah, I picked it. I mean, it's cheap enough. So, I grabbed that. Another one that I think is underrated. I remember watching this. This was a direct to video movie back in 1990. It's another one that Mick Garris directed. Psycho 4, The Beginning, it's a prequel. The Beginning means it's a prequel. So this one <clears throat> is a precursor, really, to the Bates Motel TV show. Henry Thomas plays a young Norman Bates in this. Olivia Hussey is Norma, which, damn, she was so beautiful in this movie. I just look back at that, and there's a shot, too. This was like a... A lot of people think, I don't know if this is a TV movie or what, but it was not originally supposed to be on TV because her tits are featured in this. And they are quite amazing. So Psycho 4, The Beginning, is a great... I always enjoyed it. It's the only Psycho film, with Anthony Perkins at least, that is not that in my collection on Blu-ray. I had the opportunity... To get the Vince Vaughn 98 Psycho, but I said, oh, hell no. Now, this one I did not get in the sale. I think I got it on Mercari for a pretty decent price. Um, I've always been a fan of this movie. If I didn't get it at that good of a price, though, I probably wouldn't have purchased it. It's still sealed. I think this one is out of print, um, at least with the slip cover. So, uh, the Chuck Russell... 80, I think 1988 Blob uh, remake. Um, it's a very 80s, great effects in this. And the odd thing too, Frank Darabont actually uh, wrote part of this with Chuck Russell, I believe. So um, yeah, I'm glad to pick this one up um, again. It's probably been a while. Kevin Dillon, Shawnee Smith is in this. It's a very 80s, great makeup effects. The blob is awesome in this. Um, so, yeah, I grabbed it. I ordered these a little bit before Valentine's Day. I was hoping I would get it in before Valentine's Day because I wanted to check this out on Valentine's Day. It's Valentine from director Jamie Blanks, the same guy that did Urban Legends. A lot of people have really been masturbating this movie, and I figured I would check it out again. I don't remember liking this movie at all, but I'm a fan of slasher films, so I will give it another shot. David Boreanaz with the bloody nose stars in this. Um, Denise Richards is in this as well. Who else is in this? Marley Shelton is actually in this too, because I'm I'm a fan of, you know, I, I like her. I've always enjoyed her look ever since the Sandlot. But uh, Valentine, yeah, they had that. This one was like sixteen bucks um, on sale on their. I think it was their Valentine sale or whatever. So I figured, fuck it, I'll try it again and check it out. Another one that I picked up that um, I've always been a big fan of this movie. Big fan of Amy Steele. She's such a sweet person. We've met her. We've had her on the show. Um, and I did not own this um, on. I think I had it on DVD. But it was an old DVD, and it was time to upgrade. So this is April Fool's Day. I will probably go back. I'm not a big fan of the cover of this because it kind of gives the movie away, in a way. But April Fool's Day is a fun... Um, again, it's very much... It's similar to Friday the 13th. I always felt that this had the same feel as some of those you know, mid 80 Friday the 13th movies. It, it's been a while since I've seen this though. So this is one that I'm planning on watching with Sarah and we will try to have a review for this up before April Fool's Day. How about that? I love holiday horror movies. So that's it for the Scream Factory stuff. I did receive one other title that I forgot about and I just saw it over here. 
And um, it is the one only Vinegar Syndrome movie that I picked up for this month. I've been taking a little bit of a break because they're coming out with so much stuff. And we're going to be talking about it um, on the show. I got to pace myself with this shit. So I've been trying to get all of their VSA releases, which if you guys don't know, they hand number these things. You can see there, there's 3,859 of 4,000. This is Necromancer, and it's got a double cover on it. It's kind of glossy and gorgeous. Elizabeth Katane is in this. You can see her there. She was in, I think, Friday the 13th, um, part seven, if I'm not mistaken. And this one came out the exact same year. She was also in Silent Night, Deadly Night 2, I think. She's the girl that says, uh-oh, whenever, you know, Eric Freeman kind of goes nuts. So I've been trying to collect a lot of, not all the VSAs, but the ones that sound good to me. So I grabbed this one again, Necromancer. Um, it is VSA number nine. I think they're up to like 11 or 12 or something like that now. I've got a good good amount of them. Um, but yeah, Vinegar Syndrome stuff's great, man. The boxes are thick. Um, and the releases are just top notch. I think the deal with the VSA releases too is once they're gone, they're gone, and they're not getting reprinted. So that's Necromancer. And that is it, man. It's been a hell of a long fucking video. I apologize, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I only, <clears throat> I'm kind of trying to not do the unboxings and just do one monthly collection video. Um, that simplifies things a little bit. It's a longer video because it's once a month, but that way I can show you guys what I picked up each month, talk about the movies a little bit. Um, I think people kind of enjoy that. Um, but yeah, if you haven't checked out our website, deadpit.com, Patreon is deadpitonpatreon.com. Um, we've got all kinds of content on there. Over a hundred episodes of the Dead Pit Show is up today. We've got 60, 70 plus Dead Pit midweek shows, almost 50 commentaries at this point, I'm thinking close to 50. So there's a lot of content on there that you can get starting at $1 per month. Goes all the way up to the baller and shot collar tier where you actually produce Dead Pit. You tell us what the fuck you want us to review and we will review it. So until next time, I am the Creepy Kentuckian and you can check out all of our stuff, everything, get links to everything, our social media bullshit, all that, over at deadpit.com. A special thank you goes out to our supporters on Patreon. The Patreon website has a complete archive of the Dead Pit Radio shows starting way back in 2005, in addition to all of the midweek shows archived, commentaries, all that good stuff. If you're interested and we appreciate all the support, go to www.patreon.com backslash into the dead pit. Tiers start as low as $1 per month.